So that last second play not only puts an exclamation mark on this ascension to the elite status of college football, it also puts an exclamation point on bowl play and the ACC's performance as an entire conference. Uh, This is something that always fascinates me. I always think it's a great debate, but it wasn't much of a debate in college football for six, seven, eight, ten years. Uh, we, we have some disagreements on that, not you and I, but a number of people that I talked to in regards to SEC dominance that I think was certainly there, certainly real, certainly proven, but overplayed uh, for a number of years because when you get selected to go to every championship game, it's you're, you're going to win a lot of them, and no other conference was selected every time. Uh, but now we've got an ACC season that finishes at 9-3, and three, and it's not just – hey, who won that Florida State-Clemson game? Oh, wow. They advanced. They got to an Orange Bowl. And in this case, they get to the ACC championship game and they move on. They sweep the playoff. They beat two heavyweights. And they're great. The rest of the conference, eh. No, this, this conference is starting to provide some depth. And so Florida State, that didn't look like a vintage Florida State team certainly in losing to Louisville and losing a couple of other games. Here we see them the first week of January. They're knocking off a Michigan team that many people thought was a top four team. And then if we just cascade down the list of ACC performances, there were few disappointments. Maybe Louisville would be the one with Lamar Jackson in place, only kicking three field goals, really not putting up much of a fight against LSU. But other than that, a just a solid performance. It really was, and I think that you got to look at what you were pointing towards as some of the some of the more premier kind of in the spotlight matchups. Uh, so you mentioned the Florida State Michigan game. Florida State really got better throughout the year. They were struggling a little bit. They were not a particularly complete team for the first half or so of the season. They ended up giving Clemson a run for their money, and other than that, they finished the season without much of a blemish, uh, beating Florida pretty comfortably. And they go in and they and they beat a really good Michigan team, like you said. They scored 33 points on a good Michigan defense. So they, they put on an impressive show that way, especially kind of out of conference there to finish the year with Florida and Michigan. Uh, I thought another game that was really an, an impressive showing was unranked Miami taking down West Virginia. It was a ranked team out of the Big 12 and beat up on them pretty good. And I would consider the Russell Athletic Bowl that they played in to be a bit of a a bit of a, a spotlight type of game, is in the terms of ACC bowl selections. As you mentioned, the one big game where there was just a total uh, a total clunker from an ACC team was from Louisville in that uh, Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl. Um, I for that one, if you guys listen, actually, the, the what Mike and I got on and did after the game on uh, Monday night was our recap edition of the basketball conference podcast that we've done all season covering ACC football in our preview of the bowl season. I I basically told Mike, that's what was going to happen to Louisville. They they were really hot through about 10 weeks of the season. And then like you guys mentioned before, they got beat by Houston came out and just laid an egg against Kentucky. They should have won that game and the defense was awful and you can go as far as you want there, but, I basically told him that LSU was going to expose all the issues that Houston exposed, and they were going to do it worse because they had more talent than Houston does on that defense. So that was really the big disappointment of bowl season. Um, I, and so I think that that was – but other than that, I mean, Georgia Tech beats Kentucky. Uh, even teams – you go all the way down the list, Boston College beats Maryland. Uh, another really impressive sneaky showing from the ACC was Wake Forest beating Temple. Um, there were a lot of these that, as you guys mentioned before, it was relatively even matchups or certainly appropriate matchups. It wasn't just, you know, uh, Miami against, you know, a, a mid-caliber AAC team. It was more Miami against, like, the third best team in the Big 12, you know. And so there were some legitimacy to those matchups, and the ACC really handled them well, I thought. And really it was a testament, I think, to two things. A, being some really good coaching hires in previous years. Uh, the, the division, especially the Coastal, has made some really good hires the last couple of years. The other thing was really improved quarterback play, and that's something that I start to wonder if they'll be able to sustain over the long run. And the reason is, if you just look at the the exodus that you're getting of ACC quarterbacks in this offseason, talking about not only Deshaun Watson, but talking about uh, Brad Kaya from Miami, Mitch Trubisky from North Carolina, 
Uh, Justin Thomas is graduating from Georgia Tech. Uh, several of these guys will not be returning, and it really kind of figures to make the league look a little different headed into uh, 2017. Yeah, so North Carolina lost in the last play of game against Stanford. No shame in that. Stanford finishes 10-3, and three, and uh, Pitt loses to Northwestern. Sure, they were a decent favorite, but you're not going to win all the games. So Louisville, as you mentioned, the one downer. And I put a lot of stock in bowl play, and this is the reason why. It's the one time during the season that we can see like-seeded teams, as you alluded to, Joey, for the most part, like seeded teams play. So it's the best comparison of the conferences. Even though there are a lot of teams, most teams go out and schedule at least one difficult non-conference game, there is no way of knowing, scheduling these games five years in advance, how good the other team's going to be. So they could be the 10th best team in the Big Ten, near the third best team in the ACC. And sure, you win the game, you need to win the game, Uh, That's about all you can do. But in terms of trying to compare conferences, you need like-seeded teams generally playing, and that's what you have during bowl play. Virginia Tech, their trajectory, I would think, would be up. Uh, uh, Of course, Gerard Evans not going to be back, but um, and and that's another quarterback situation that needs to be resolved. But uh, twenty-four nothing, they come back on Arkansas. So what's impressive to me, Joey, is we talked about this with Mike. I don't know if you caught this, but there's that traditional matchup uh, of four games between between the ACC and the SEC that final weekend of the season. And the way things have gone for these eight programs, the ACC has a distinct advantage. Clemson, South Carolina, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And so there, you can't put a whole lot of stock in that. But these two conferences, this is great to see, played 14 times this year. And because many of those were in postseason play, they be they, this becomes a relevant statistic. And the ACC won 10 of 14 against the mighty SEC. And that that is uh, that really can't be ignored when you talk about that many games and that many like-seeded teams playing, Joey. Absolutely not. And I think so one of the key reasons that we often end up comparing the ACC and the SEC is there's a bit of a crossover in the footprint, right? Especially you start talking about uh, into the Carolinas, you know, Georgia, Florida, there's a lot of recruiting ground that's kind of shared. And so on some level, a lot of the ACC is competing with a lot of the SEC. Um, and, and so for years, as you mentioned, I mean, the, the dominance was just there from the SEC. They were out recruiting everybody. They were out playing everybody largely in the, in the ACC. But I think really you could look back at the last three years, and we talk about that weekend at the end of, uh, I guess, the weekend after Thanksgiving, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and then Clemson, South Carolina, Florida State, Florida, Georgia, Georgia Tech. I want to say, it, it, maybe I'm remembering this wrong, but I think over the last three years, the ACC might be like 10 and two in those games. And the only losses being Georgia tech last year to Georgia and Kentucky this year beating Louisville. Um, I, I want to say it was a clean sweep in 2014 and then three and one the other two years. So really kind of a, 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 uh, a testament to the shift in power a little bit as we've seen recently, particularly with the downfall of the SDC East in recent years. Um, But it is really encouraging to see a a rise from the ACC Coastal, especially in terms of of how they compare football-wise nationally. Um, And and as you mentioned as well, it's not just Florida State and it's not just Clemson. It's kind of happening all over the conference. There's been several matchups this year, uh, NC State and Vanderbilt. That seems like a pretty fair matchup. NC State runs away with it. there were games throughout the year. The ACC performed really well uh, during in out of conference play. Um, I, I'm not always willing to put a ton of stock into bowl play because there are some kind of some weirdness around them dealing with coaches leaving or uh, guys leaving for the draft. As you saw, there was a couple of games where guys were leaving for the draft and didn't even want to play in the bowl game. So there's some different elements at play in bowl season, not always that may not make it a totally fair comparison, but either way, the ACC showing was very impressive and I think speaks to a longer term trend that's gone really well for the league. Yeah, I'll make a correction here because I completely agree with you, Joey, in regards to putting stock in the results of postseason play. There is weirdness when it comes to coaching changes, coordinators leaving, either blame ducks staying and coaching, but most of 
usually they they move on and you've got a vacancy and you've got to shift coaches around. You also have to question motivation and all that sort of thing. I was just making the point that that's all we have to go on in regards to matching up like-seeded teams.